good morning all how is everybody doing welcome back to the shire shed i of course am sunny and i will be bringing you yet another review today with eh, some extra shit thrown in because why not why not today i'm going to be reviewing uh, a blend that was actually requested by mr marcus matzik He requested it through uh, Facebook, one of the Facebook groups I'm in, and, you know, it, it's a great blend, and I'm honestly not sure why I haven't reviewed it yet. It's, uh, as you can see in the thumbnail, it is Gawith and Hogarth Dark Bird's Eye, and this is not the shag cut. This is uh, what I would refer to as more of a traditional ribbon cut. It's very, very good, and... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I'll be enjoying this blend today in my Peterson XL02 Emerald with a P lip. This is a great pipe. I don't smoke it nearly often enough. Oh, and uh, of course, Dunkin' Donuts. And, uh, you see that? I'll get into that here in a minute. So, just off the top, this stuff is wonderful. I actually like it so much that, uh, for a little while there, I thought, I thought it was going to be my daily smoker. Um, it almost got there. But you know me in Haunted Bookshop. But that said, this one, the smell out of the bag because... Uh, it, it does come in bulk. The smell out of the bag straight up reminds me of like a crisp fall day. Those of us who live in rural areas and in the country and stuff, at any given time in the early fall, early and mid fall, you could maybe go for a drive or go for a walk or if you have a motorcycle go for a ride and you get this wonderful campfire kind of you can just smell that people have fires burning all over you know whether it's a bonfire that they've got going on in their backyard or whether there's maybe a little a little chill in the air and they just wanted to maybe get a fire started in, in the fireplace. There's this wonderful scent around. That's what this reminds me of. And it is lovely. Some really, really good stuff. It, uh, I believe it's still available uh, pretty regularly at that. It's, um, it's a Kentucky. Off the top of my head, I know it's a Kentucky kind of style. But uh, I'll be right back and I'll, I'll go through the tobacco reviews breakdown. See you in a second. Okay. And I am back. So as I said, this is Gawith and Hogarth. Dark Bird's Eye. And they call this a vintage cut. I said traditional cut. Whatever. It's not a shag. This is not the shag version. Um, which I do have uh, the Kendall Kentucky. Which is another favorite of mine. And the shag cut. And it is 
It's wonderful. That's for another episode. Wink. Uh, however, this is Dark Bird's Eye Vintage Cut. Dark Bird's Eye is a bold mixture that showcases mature Virginias and dark-fired Kentucky. For a rich flavor profile that highlights the varietal's natural essences. While Galwith, Hogarth, and Company has traditionally only offered shag cut versions of their blends to the U.S., this vintage cut edition presents Dark Bird's Eye in a classic ribbon format. Brand blended, manufactured, Goth and Hogarth. Blend type is a Virginia base. It is a Kentucky, Virginia. It's a ribbon cut available in bulk. Country of origin is United Kingdom, and it is apparently, apparently still available. There is one review on the vintage cut. And it is a lengthy, lengthy review. I have ADD, so I'm not going to read that. What I will say is, this is most definitely a Kentucky, Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, whatever you want to whatever order you want to put that in. It's uh, got that great, bold, thick Kentucky flavor. Thick with three C's, like a bowl of oatmeal. But then it has this really, really nice Virginia flavor. I would say that, I don't know for sure, but I would say maybe some reds, maybe some brights. Um, it is, it is truly, truly wonderful. The, uh, the bag note, like I said, is evokes all kinds of feelings and, and thoughts of, of fall and football and, and raking leaves and any other form of memory that you might have of autumn. Uh, and then when you pack it, it packs so very nicely with a caveat. As with pretty much every Gawith slash Gawith and Hogarth blend I've ever come across, they're damn near dripping wet. So I would highly recommend drying this out fairly well. But once you've done that, it packs wonderfully. It lights wonderfully. And it stays lit quite well. Uh, get a lot of good, solid Virginia flavor. Definitely some red Virginia there. This is one of the best blends I would say to have like on a, on that rare occasion, at least here in the Midwest, where you maybe get a morning that is humid maybe, but in the 50s or 60s in the morning. perfect for that which is why when I woke up this morning I said you know I do believe it's going to be a good day to do that review Retro Hill honestly nothing but Virginia's on it 
all I'm catching is Virginias, and that is just fine. If you go looking for bite on this, you're not going to find it. Very well behaved. Very well behaved. Flavor never wanes. Never really changes, which is fine. Nice, rich smoke. It's honestly one of the most perfect balances of Virginia and Kentucky. Now, as far as the strength goes, this stuff's pretty strong. I wouldn't put it up there with like Rustica necessarily, but it's probably mm, it's probably somewhere between like Bold Kentucky and Haunted Bookshop in terms of strength it doesn't really come close to either of those flavors though oddly enough even though Bold Kentucky is a Kentucky, and so is this, there's something else going on here. Flavor-wise, I would say this is somewhere in between Bold Kentucky and Old Dark Fired. Which Old Dark Fired, of course, is the best blend ever made. However, I've recently amended that, and I, I believe that Rustica is the best blend ever made. Rustica kills both Bold Kentucky and Old Dark Fired. I'm not going to change my mind. My bad. Had to had to plug in my my shit. Um, so yeah, strength very strong. If you are in any way a nicotine lightweight. I mean, you can try it, but you better eat a big full meal and have a bowl that's the size of a thimble. Now, I've noticed that if you do push this, as with really any blend that has Virginia's in it, you kind of lose the the flavor profile. It kind of just flattens out. Um, doesn't get gross or anything, but it just kind of flattens out. This is honestly truly some wonderful stuff and uh, I'm very grateful for blenders that are still around that process and blend their tobacco to this level of quality and deliciousness it is very much some wonderful stuff does it burn super fast but it doesn't burn super slow either it's like even in a big bowl like this I, I'm almost halfway through and like I said you have to dry this out pretty well if you want it to cooperate at all but that's I mean that's with any tobacco. I I tend to like mine a little bit more on the drier side than the other direction, but mess around with it. 
find what works for you and your tastes and your preferences and your patience. <laughs> That's the big one. Now, there are certain blends that you could damn near dry them out to ash and you're just going to have to relight them every 10 minutes anyway. Looking at you, Rustico. So what's the verdict? Nine and a half out of 10, no question. Go and get it. It just checks all the boxes, literally. It's a wonderful blend. It's available in bulk, which had me had me hooked right there. I was like, oh, bulk, a bulk Kentucky style? Let's go. Got with an Hogarth, dark bird's eye, vintage cut. Go and get you some. Now, on to not tobacco related things. Got a couple couple things to address. So last couple weeks my favorite guy in the world, Alan Harrelson. has gotten himself into some hot water it seems and on the day I found out about the reason he got himself into hot water or, or how or whatever I was fairly tuned up not as much right now Uh, that said, I'm I'm legitimately <laughs> legitimately surprised his channel is still active on YouTube. Uh, I I honestly I can't believe it, uh, especially in this day and age, um, with hate speech being what it is, and 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 honestly, if you don't know what's going on, um not really going to bring too much more light to it except to say that um, he said something that was very very volatile and, and not loving or uh, compassionate in any way shape or form um, pretty much just straight up hateful his opinions are his, that's fine, but so are mine. Um, still pretty pissed off about it, and I hope Stamper Tamper's doing okay. Um, I haven't heard much out of him recently, but uh, he's a military brother, so he... he will most likely blast through it like a like a fucking animal because that's what we do so yeah I'm, I'm still in shock about that uh, a little bit not because of who said it because I'm not surprised that he's a bigot it's not, I mean not a shock in any way, shape, or form, I don't think, to anyone. Um, but I'm not religious or spiritual in any way, shape, or form, but I know that he is, and I hope he is. 
I hope he gets right with his God. Because what I do know about Christianity and, and the teachings of it is that Jesus said to love everyone. Period. Not love everyone unless they're gay. Love everyone unless they're black. Love everyone unless they're poor. Pretty sure he said love everyone. And while I don't follow Jesus Christ's teachings, I kind of feel like that's a universal thing to love everyone. And you don't necessarily have to follow a religion to believe in that teaching. So that's kind of where I'm at. Love everyone. So, done with that. Next thing. Uh, you guys might judge me a little bit. That's okay. Your boy got a new job. And, gosh, it was a little over a year ago that I was telling you that I was going to be starting for the county. I want to say that would have been March of last year. And I was very excited. I was very, very happy to be working for the county in which I reside. And I'm still immensely proud of the work I've done for the county. Honestly, one of the best jobs, one of the most enjoyable jobs I've ever had was working for the county. However, very shortly after I started with the county, after working for the boss that I was working for, I said, man, if I wasn't leaving before, I'm definitely not leaving working for this guy because he is the best boss I've ever had. No question, no hesitation. He is and will always be the best boss. Well, I can't say will always be because I could end up working for somebody that's as good or possibly better, but that would be really difficult. That's, that's a hell of a bar. Um, but I had said, you know, I'm, I'm not leaving the county unless he leaves. That's how good he was. And you notice I said was. Um, he is one of those bosses that is incredibly knowledgeable. He knows where the bodies are buried. He knows where everything is, where everything's going to go. And usually knows all of that information before our director even did. So if I ever had a question, if I ever had an issue, if I ever had anything that I needed his assistance with, he was on it. He was... He was the guy. He was the guy. And uh, not only all that, this is my favorite part right here. He left us the fuck alone to do our jobs. Imagine that. A boss that trusts you enough to leave you be. So you can get your stuff done. But is also available in case you need him. What? Yeah. For those of us out there in the working world, I'm sure we all know just how rare someone like that is. So, for all those reasons, I said, I'm not leaving unless he leaves. Well, I heard through the grapevine, uh, and this was starting probably back in October or November, maybe, that 
he had applied or was thinking about applying for the neighboring county. And uh, it's no, no real surprise, honestly, because the neighboring county pays well over and above what this county pays and certainly pays market value for corresponding positions. So I said, you know, he's probably, if he is looking, because I know he didn't want to leave our county. So he's probably just trying to use that as a negotiating tactic or a bargaining chip of, of some kind. So I approached him about it last year and I trust him to be honest with me. And he was, he said, yeah, I did apply for that. And, um, basically confirmed, you know, what I was thinking. I said, okay, well, keep me posted because my staying at this County is contingent upon you staying at this County. <laughs> And he said, okay, I'll, I'll keep you posted as much as I can. So, uh, fast forward to about two weeks ago. And it's the government, even if it's the county government, the wheels of government grind slowly. And he came to me. No, well, he didn't come to me. I heard, I heard through the grapevine yet again that he had, in fact, accepted a position with the neighboring county. And I know that he's got to keep this stuff. He's got to play it close to the vest. It's all it's all a a strategy. It's all it, it's all a game, especially when you're dealing with, you know, current employers versus new employers and all that stuff. I get it. Um, so I hold no ill will toward him for kind of keeping it under his hat. So after I heard this and the source that I heard it through actually had two positions that he needed filled, not with his company, but with a company that contracted for his company. And I said, uh, okay, well, let me, let me do some digging. I will apply and I will have my wife apply for these two positions. So they had two positions to fill. She and I both applied for them. Once we applied, uh, and this was before, I believe before I even had an interview set up, I talked to my boss one-on-one -on -one and I said, hey, look, uh, I may have a job opportunity coming up very quickly. And I said, do you remember when I told you that I'm not leaving the county as long as you're here? And he said, yeah. I said, uh, okay, well, if I get an offer for this job, I need to know if I need to take it. And he said, take it. I said, okay. So it has been confirmed that he is starting with the neighboring county. And my wife and I both accepted the positions that we were subsequently offered for considerably more money by a lot we're both staying in the locating world which is good because I love utility locating it is my passion it is my love and it's something that I never ever want to let go um, I truly truly enjoy it from the bottom of my heart and uh, but we don't have to do all locating all the time. It's like maybe 5% locating and the rest. We will be damage prevention auditors. So we go in behind the locators and make sure that they marked everything they needed to mark. And that's it. Sometimes we'll have to hook up and locate. So that's good for my wife because she doesn't like being outside for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours at a time because who she currently, well, she actually isn't working for them anymore. Uh, some of those locates would have her out in the elements for 
two, three hours. Not super fun. With this job, it's a lot more of, as I'm being led to believe, it's a lot more of, hey, get out, verify. Okay, that's there, that's there. Okay, that's marked, that's marked, that's marked. Okay, cool, that's good to go. And that's it. Much less time out of the vehicle, uh, which is fine with me. I don't care. I'll do some driving. Doesn't bother me a bit. Doesn't bother her a bit either. Uh, so, all this to say that I am absolutely chuffed to bits to start this new new career path, sort of, kind of. Uh, however, it does leave my county in a bit of a pickle because they have a new locator starting on Monday, and he's kind of out of the frying pan into the fire because I am... I'll, my last day is next Friday. So if you're watching this, my last day is like six days away. So, <laughs> good times. Anyway, that's what's been going on with me. Uh, I've been doing a hell of a lot of riding, hell of a lot of stuff around the house. Garden is going ape shit. I've given up on trying to control the tomatoes they are just going crazy and I, I, I don't we're gonna have a lot of tomatoes oh and this was a a gift a welcome gift from my new company not a knockoff yeti that's an actual fucking yeti Just, hey, welcome, thanks for joining our team, kind of thing. They are an engineering firm out of Minnesota. I'm, I'm absolutely in disbelief. So, yeah, that's what's been going on with old Sonny. Uh, I'm going to finish this and probably cuddle with the dog. She's napping right now real hard. Oh, oh, is she awake? She's awake. She's adjusting. Okay. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you have tried this before, put it in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of it because I'd like to know your thoughts. Honestly, I haven't heard a bad thing from anyone about it. I haven't heard anyone say, oh, it tastes like shit, it's a, whatever. I haven't heard a bad thing at all. So I would be very surprised if I heard something bad about Gotham Hogarth, Dark Words Eye. Uh, so, I mean, that does it. This has been a long video, so I'm going to wrap this one up right now. Uh, I love you guys. Thanks for continuing to watch, even though my uploads haven't been as consistent here as of late. Uh, I promise I haven't forgotten about this channel or you guys. Uh, I love every single one of you that supports this channel. If you don't support this channel, go support somebody else because whatever. <laughs> yeah, those of you that know me know that's how it goes. Uh, so if you did watch this and enjoyed it and it was your first time watching, do me a favor. Throw a subscribe at me. Throw a like at me. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you're new and uh, if you are new and you enjoyed this, welcome to the channel and all of its chaos and just ridiculousness. Frivolity? I don't know. I'm out of words. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. But if you do, don't get caught. Later, everybody.